Halleluja. Let's all stand tonight, amen. Let's worship God tonight. I want to welcome everyone. Good to see everyone tonight. Let's get the mindset of worship. Let's sing this song, amen. Victory in Jesus. Come on. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and he bound me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me into victory. Victory in Jesus, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to He plunged me into victory beneath the wind. One more time. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is new. He brought me into victory beneath the glen. He set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see, singing glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see, singing glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bond of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see, singing glory to God. He said, I'm so me glad. Free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. On my way to heaven, Jesus set me free. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. Singing glory, hallelujah. Come on. Set me free. Once I was a drunker, when Jesus set me free. Once I was a drunker, when Jesus set me free. Once I was a drunker, when Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Once I was religious. Once I was religious and Jesus set me free. Come on. Once I was religious and Jesus set me free. Once I was religious and Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Oh, come on. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Satan had me back. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. On my way to heaven. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus sent me free. Let's worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight, God. We worship you, God, in your house tonight. Father, that you will have your way tonight in this mid-service, God, that you will. God, you speak to us tonight, God, as we continue to worship you tonight. We sing songs to you, amen, as we slow it down. Let's sing this song together, amen. This is my desire, amen. Hallelujah.
Sing it, amen. Above all powers. Oh, 
Father, that you have your way tonight, God. We thank you for this mid service tonight. Father, that you move, oh God, in this place, oh God, move supernatural tonight, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, God. We thank you for all that you're going to do in this place. We honor you, we worship you, we praise your wonderful name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hallelujah. Stop, stop. That's not stop giving him praise. Hallelujah. As I get situated. Yes. Hallelujah. Tonight, God, 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 have your way. You Hallelujah. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer requests. We want to pray for healing and anxiety for Sonia Jones. Cindy for healing, for breathing problems. Amen. For Paula for healing and from her cancer. Uh, Peter, John for healing and strength. Raina for healing and strength. Gary and Josephine for healing and direction and, their, and reconciling their marriage. For Auntie Frances, amen, that's, son, that's Sean's auntie. Healing from pneumonia and infection that she got going on in her body, amen. With this prayer request known, amen, I want us to lift our voices, amen. want to pray for our pastor while he's away, him and his family. They want to just give, the, give God, God the glory and the joy tonight as we get ready to lift up these prayers. Amen. As we get ready to open up, I want to have Brother Donovan once again open us up in prayer. Hallelujah. God, we want to thank you right now, God. God, you have your way up in this room, in this house, oh God. You see right now, we pray for jo uh, Sonia. We pray right now for Gary and Josephine in their marriage. God. We want to pray for Peter John right now for healing and strength. We pray for Raina for healing right now. We pray for Gary again. We pray for right now for Auntie Francis. Hallelujah. For healing from this pneumonia right now. Yes, Father, we thank you tonight, God, again, Lord. Father, to be in your house again, God, your mercy and your grace God upon our lives God father we lift up all these needs oh God spoken and unspoken needs tonight father you are the healer God you are the restorer God tonight God we pray for healing we pray God that you restore marriages oh God father we put all this in your hands that you are the miracle worker God father that you will break break every chain God every yoke God every bondage oh God we pray against the lie of the enemy tonight we pray God that that you will continue to move, oh God. Raise up men in this congregation. Raise up, oh God, this church, oh God. Father, we pray for the surrounding church tonight. We pray, God, for the services, God. We pray for Tucson's congregation. We pray, God, for Pastor Warner, God, Sister Mona. Pastor Nago, God, and the wife, oh God, and family in Modesto, God, tonight, God. We pray for our pastor for traveling mercy, God, to cover them. God, we thank you tonight for this service tonight. And we are grateful tonight that we find rest in you. You, my God, you anoint our brother tonight as he minister behind this pulpit, oh God, anoint every word, oh God, that he minister to fit, oh God, our hearts tonight. Speak to our hearts tonight. We thank you. Glorify you, God. We give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Announcements. Uh, on this Friday, I think the 25th, Pastor wanted me to let everyone know there's going to be a music scene this Friday, amen, in Puyallup at 730 and also, don't forget this morning's uh, morning service on the uh, 27th. Make sure I'm doing it. And also, don't forget the evening Bible study. You know, we're still studying the root of rejection. So that's been a helpful, uh, just listening to that, it's been helpful to me to learn a lot of different things about myself. So if you're watching it online and you have not seen the series, amen, I recommend seeing it or just come to church that Sunday night, amen. We're open, amen. That's, enough, that's all the announcements that I have. Amen. So I was thinking about offering. And this time of the year, now everybody knows what time of the year it is. The end of the year where we get our income tax. That's when we get that lump sum. That's that lump sum that everybody have a problem of giving. They always ask the question, do I have to give that? But you got to remember one thing, church. That's something we, we never thought we were going to receive because you got to remember, it can always be taken away. And I was thinking about this, and I was like, tithe. Tithe means 10, 10%. Giving 10% of your income is just giving something back to God that's already his, amen. Even though all, even that all, our, all our hope, all that we have comes from God. This is why we have to give back unto him, amen. And I was reading, and I was thinking about this. And it says the tithing is a remaining that God, we got to remind ourselves that God is the supplier. He supplies our need. This is what we pray for. God bless my finances. But the problem is we're too busy taking it back and saying, wait a minute, hold on, God. I, I know I prayed for this, but, but you know how it is. Once we get that lump sum in our hands or in our bank account, 
We start thinking, I got to get this, I got to get that, or maybe I get a new car, or maybe I get a new Xbox, whatever it may be. We don't think about what already belongs to God. That's the first thing we need to think about, 10%. That's all he wants, 10% of what we got. He don't want, he didn't say 20, he didn't say 50, he didn't say 50, he said 10%, amen. So we need to think about that when it's time to give God his, his share. He is the supplier. He's the one that allows us to do the things we need to do in life. So we need to stop struggling with that, stop beating ourselves up every time when it's income tax time, why we should give God that 10%, amen. Because you got to remember, that wasn't yours. You wouldn't even got that if it wasn't for God, amen. So be a blessing tonight. Be a, be a, be a cheerful giver. Give your tithes and your offering tonight, amen. Brother Ben, can you play for this offering, amen? Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. 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 No other name I know. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Let's go up. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Hallelujah. Get myself situated. Get my time. So I don't want to go over the time like I did last time. Amen. But I want everyone to turn in your Bibles to Psalms 37. And I'm not going to read it just yet. We're going to read it all together. And what made me think about this this topic tonight, amen, it was, I was listening to a, a song I love, a gospel song I love listening to, and it called, Order My Steps in Your Word, Dear Lord, Lead Me, Guide Me Every Day. Anoint, and anointing Father, I pray, order my steps in your word. And I was thinking about this, okay, Lord, order my steps. And what popped in my mind is when, you know, my granddaughter came over one weekend, and when she left my house, she was crawling all over the place. And then her mom sent a video of her on Christmas walking around, taking her first steps. Church, I haven't, I've never seen none of my kids take their first step. But just watching her, it fascinated me. Now she's at the house. I'm on the floor. Well, first I was on my knees. Then she wanted me to play patty cake with her. Then she started bossing me around, and I got down on the floor. Then I'm just walk, watching her walk all over the place. But the problem is she like walking straight to the bathroom. For some reason, I don't know. I guess she already know where she needs to go. But she's walking straight to the bathroom, so I had to turn her around. You know, and she was just walking around. And I was thinking about it. I looked online, and I said, and I was like, how many steps do an average person walk? It's like 3,000 or 4,000 steps a day. And that's like 1.5 to 2 miles a day. And it, what it does, it averages out to about 10,000 steps. That's what we try to lead up to. And I'm thinking, I'll say, look at God order her steps. She's just walking, talking, just moving around. And that's fascinating because some babies can't do that. You know, like my sister, when we were, to, when we, we were preemies, and when we were born, they brought her home first. But I was still there at the hospital. They said that she was okay, but I needed some work, as you can tell. But <laughs> so the thing was, the thing is this, like a couple of months, because I was reading online, it says it take a baby about nine months to start walking. But it's normal for them to start at 17 to 18 months. She never started walking, but then I was. 
So there was a problem there. So that's, you know, it's when the doctors got involved and all that. What, you know, my sister has cerebral palsy. So she never could walk. She's been in a wheelchair, she's been wheelchair bound all her life. But that's, for me, this is what I'm, t- my, why I'm telling this story now. This is about how God is ordering our steps. And that's my title tonight, Order My Steps. As we read Psalms 37, verse 23, 24, I'm going to read you the King James Version. We're going to read it all together. One, two, three. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he is delight in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him in his hand. And I like the Amplifying Version. I'm going to read that. It's not up there on the board, but it says, The steps of a good, righteous man are directed and established by the Lord, and blesses his path. When he falls, he will not be hurled down, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand as he sustains him. Bring me to my first point tonight, order. Order look, Order is like an action verb. God is telling us, I'm going to order your steps. I'm going to order you to go straight. I don't want you to go right. I don't want you to go to the left. But God is ordering our steps as we walk. But the problem is when we become a teenagers, we don't want to go straight. When we become adults, we don't want to go straight. The problem is what we're doing, we're going right. As we go right, we keep going right, we keep going right, but we can hit a roadblock in our lives. Like, there's nothing there. So we turn around. Since I can't go right, I go left. I go left. As I'm going left, it's another roadblock you didn't hit. But God said, I'm ordering your steps. I'm ordering you to go straight. I'm ordering the direction I'm trying to get. Look at the time. Look at when, when uh, this is why, the reason why we see the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they was wandering around the same stump every day. And they were like, I just saw that. And they kept wandering around again because they would not listen to God. Because God said, I'm going to order your steps. That's what he told Moses. I'm going to lead the people out of, out of Egypt. And then they got to do what I tell them to do, but they didn't do that, amen. So that's the problem with us today. As God ordering our steps, we don't listen. Instead of us going straight where God wants us to go, the path he wants us to go on, we're going this way. I, I can do a, like the snake, do a side one of the snake, or we're going this way. I'm, t- I'm not trying to do a pimp wall. I'm just trying to tell you, this is what we do. We're going all over the place. And then the problem is when we go, when we go right and then we go left, then we're like, God, help me. Why, why I'm still going in this circle like, like the people wandering in the wilderness? It's because you're not listening to what I'm saying, child. I'm telling you what to do. But the problem is you want to do what you want to do and don't want to listen. What I'm talking about tonight, God is ordering us to do something. He ordered us to go straight. And when I'm looking at Proverbs 3 and 6, I'm going to read the Amplifying Version. I'm going to got to slow down because I, I know I talk too fast. I get excited when I want to, you know, speak God's word. He said in Proverbs 3 and 6, he will make your path straight, smooth, and remove all the obstacles. Let me read that. Remove all the obstacles that block your way. But why are we going right? Why are we going left? Straight, smooth sailing, no issues. What? I'm going to take that back. You will have issues, bumps in the roads. I, I need to rephrase that. You will have issues and bumps in the roads, but we shouldn't go right. We shouldn't go left. I'm going to tell you, when we become a teenager, when we, I'm going to back up because when I was a teenager, 13, I was in church, but I was in church for the wrong reasons. I was in church for other things. You know, I was on the church basketball team. I was doing all the things that look good, look good on the outside, but the inside I was tore up because I was out there in the world doing, I wanted to be part of the world. I wanted to do what, what my friends are doing, 13 having a girlfriend. I didn't know nothing about that. Didn't know anything about having a girlfriend, but I had one. Sad. Then, you know, but, but still, I was still on the right, just walking right. But let me tell you this. When there was like a, a, a church play, Easter play, a Christmas play, I'm in it. In the church choir, like I said, I was trying to look good on the outside. I did everything that I thought was right, but didn't know what I was doing was all wrong. 
because no one ever sat me down and said, son, you can't be doing all this ungodly stuff and try to be up in the church because I was going right. I didn't know anything about going straight and what God wanted me to do. I didn't know anything about God trying to make uh, uh, order my steps. I didn't know any of that. But as I was putting this message together, I'm like, hold on, God. You're talking about me now. Do I have to say all this about myself? For me to be real, I got to say it because I was out there. And then when I stopped going right and I saw that roadblock, I went left, way left. Doing ungodly things. I shouldn't be drinking at 15 years old. I can walk up in the store and just put a beer down on the counter and grab it. Because back then I had a beard, see. And I, I look older. But they never card us. They never said, can I have your card, sir? I just, if I don't say nothing and they don't say nothing, I'm good. I'm gone. Got my beard. I bounced. I was out of there. So, so I went right. Then I went left. Then I was lost. I was still lost when I got into service. I knew God, but I didn't have that relationship. A lot of us out there know who God is, but where's the relationship? A lot of us want to play with religion. I'm getting tongue-tied. Religion, but we don't have that relationship because we don't allow God to order our steps because we want to do what we want to do. The only reason I talk about the teenagers because when we were teenagers, we once did what they did. And then we try to correct them. They don't want the correction because they don't understand it's coming from God. It's not coming from your parent. It's coming straight from God because God is trying to tell you that he don't want you to make the same mistake as your parents did. But they don't want to hear that, church. They don't care about all that. All they want to do is, well, let me live my life. we like, okay, fine. Live your life and see what happens. But then when you live your life, then you come back. Can I come home? Can I come back into the midst? Because you got to understand, I was talking to a friend of mine today. He said, once you leave that covering of God, all hell going to break loose on your life. You, you just don't know what you're getting yourself into. I understand they think they know what's going on in life, but you don't know much. I was there. I was that guy. But now as a parent, we're trying to get our kids, mold our kids into be godly kids. Now, that's a hard job sometimes. Sometimes you want to take a brick and, boop, knock them upside the head. But you can't do that. We got to come correct, amen. We got to sit down, son. Sit down, daughter. It's okay. You got to get proper with it. Amen. Hallelujah. But the problem we run into right now, though, we, we got these two paths, but we, wanna, we don't want to follow God's path. Billy Graham said this quote. He said, imagine a wide road with people all walking in the same direction. He said, then in the center of that road is a narrow path that goes in the opposite direction. He said, and it, can be, it can be a lonely road, but it's the right road. It can be an unpopular road that's very it's very narrow. You drink some water. Woo. I'm telling you, you're preaching the word of God, you get tongue-tied, your throat get dry. There's this, he, said, he said, this road is broad. It lacks faith, conviction, morale, obedience to God. And it's, it's the most popular, very carefree, and it will lead to destruction. What he's saying is, Instead of going down the road that we're supposed to go down, we're going to take that wrong road, that wrong path. And I know all of us done that. Even you watching online, I know some of us went down that wrong road, probably still going down that wrong road, trying to fill out, figure out life. When you turn 55, you already should know what your life is about. You can't be sitting around thinking about what I'm going to do with my life. It's too late. You need to call on God now. You done, you done had all this time in the world to figure out your life at 55, 25. Let me, let me quote it 16 now. I can't say 15, but 16 now, 17. Well, here how old you are. This is where you figure things out is with God's presence. Amen. Stop trying to go down the roads that you think is going to be the right road, the wrong direction. You ever been down to a, a road where 
it's a roadblock. There's a reason for that. It's like these skiers I always hear on the radio or I hear they, they skin down on they skin at this resort, but they go down the wrong path. They know they see a big old sign that says danger. Don't go here. But they go. But then they get lost. I'm like, really? You didn't read the sign that says danger? You didn't see the that says don't go down here? You didn't see avalanche? They don't they ignore that. That's how we do God. We ignore what God had to say. We ignore our parents. We ignore all those signs that come our way. We go, we go straight for danger because that's how we want to live. You can live that by yourself. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going down no dangerous path if it says danger. That's one thing I tell you my wife don't love. She don't love snakes. You think you got a bunch of snakes in one area? She ain't going. I'm with her. I ain't going. I ain't doing that because it's dangerous. A dangerous path for him in that we're, we're facing. So what you, what's, what's going on now, as we find ourselves in a crossroads, but now we're trying to figure out things in our lives. What's next? I done went that way. I went right, but nothing was there because God is not there. I done went left, thought I can find God there, but he wasn't there. But God's not lost. God is watching everything you do. God is already taking a mental note of what's going on in your life. He's trying to figure out what you're going to do. Are you going to go down the path that I told you to go, or are you going to continue to go around in a circle like they did in the wilderness? Proverbs 16.9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. Woo-hoo-hoo. Let me read that again. It said, A man's heart, a man's heart plans his way. What does it say? But the Lord directs his step. It doesn't say the man directs his step. The man is in charge of his own life and path. It says God directs it. Like he told the Israelites, I'm going to take you out of Egypt. but You guys got to do what you need to do. What did they do? They complained against Moses. They complained against Moses. God, they say, Moses, why would God let us come out of Egypt? We had it good. We was eating good. We had, we had all the jewels. We had all the riches. We, we had what we had. But God said, no, you was in bondage. Wake up. That's why he told Moses, we need to get those people out of there. They think they know what's going on, but they don't. And that's how we are. We think we know what's going on, but we don't. We don't have the answers to everything. If you're not fit, spending time in prayer and talk, talking to God and open your mind to the things of God is trying to tell you, somebody told me, how do you know God is talking to, me, talking to you? Well, shut your mouth. Listen. It's simple. Shut your mouth and listen because if you're talking, God, can, God can't open up your eyes and your ears and your heart to things. Amen. See, this is why we have spiritual leaders in the church, spiritual sisters and brothers, amen, that's in Christ. They're going down the same path we're going, and that's to Jesus Christ. Proverbs 28 and 10 says, he who leads good people down a wrong path, and you will come to a bad end. Do good, and you will be rewarded. God is saying, don't lead people down the wrong path. If you're going to talk to somebody, giving them godly counseling or whatever, make sure they're going down the right path. Don't take them down the path that you think you've been and you think you're going to go back, amen, because where you at is where you're going to always be because if you're not in the things of God, your heart is beats the purpose, amen. And I like this when I wrote this, and this is why we have a shepherd. This is Back when I was going, we call them reverend. Because I hear Mr. Charles talking about reverend, and that's what he called pastor, reverend. We have pastor, we have reverends, we have men of God. This is why we have conferences. This is why we have revivals. This is why we have leadership like that can talk to us, and we can hear the right preaching, so we're going down the right path, so we're not struggling in our lives, amen. Hebrews 13 and 17 says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them and recognize their authority over you, 
For they are keeping watch over your soul and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who is given account of their stewardship. They're accountable for us. This is why we need to obey our spiritual leader. If our spiritual leader give us godly counsel, tell us where we need to be, not where we need to go, but where we need to be, because we already know where we think we should go, but we're not going to listen to that spiritual leadership because what you're going to say, well, 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 the, that ain't right. I, I got, my mind is already made up. If your mind is all made, already made up of what you're going to do, why would you come to your pastor? Why would you want to come talk to your pastor if your mind is already made up on what you're going to do in your life? He's there to be accountable for you. What you how you feel when sometimes when, when the one of the flocks leave or some of the flocks leave, that hurts a pastor. That even hurts the, the members. Because once that flock leaves, that's, uh, that sheep leaves, it hurts. It's hurtful because now you feel like, what am I doing wrong? But God is trying to say, you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing right. You're just, you're just trying to guide them down the right path where they should go. They the one wants to go where they want to go. And that's where we need to stop thinking, getting our mindset like this. Well, the pastor always want to be in my business, and uh, he don't know. He talks to God every night, every day, every single hour. What do you mean he don't know? God knows everything that's going on with, in our lives. That's why he goes to that spiritual leader. That's why he goes to him to let him know, hey, one of your flocks is thinking like this. We need to, we need to talk to him a little bit. We need to counsel and counsel him. You know, pretty much what I'm saying is he's there to just a comfort zone. Someone we can just just blah, throw up on. Not literally throw up, but whatever's going on in your mind is in your heart. God, he's there. But then you're also there for him because he can go through some things, and you don't know. This is why I tell you, just listen. Most of the time, people don't like listening. They like to give advice. No, just listen, because sometimes what you're going through, that person's going through, your, godly, your, uh, your spiritual leader going through it too as well. But let me tell you this, though, church. Don't think you're not accountable for yourselves. Romans 14, 12 says, So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. We're accountable. Not just our spiritual leader, amen. We're accountable for ourselves to God. So don't think you out of the clear, amen. We're still up in here. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but the, against the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. This is why we need to be accountable. Because there's things out there in this world we cannot see. The wickedness is out there. I can't discuss too much what's going on, but you know what? You, we see it. We see it. We see all the looting and the breaking in the stores. We see carjackings. We hear about all those things. But those things was going on before they started going on now. They've been going on. This is why we need to be on our knees. This is why we need to hold ourselves accountable to God. This is why we have those spiritual leaders. Because if you don't have those and not accountable for yourselves, Where's, you going, where's your path going to go? This is why we try to teach our kids. You, you're accountable now. You now are, is walking that walk now, that path, that same path that we walk down, but we want you to walk on the path where we're at now, the straight, narrow path. We understand you're going to go through all this over here on the right. We understand you're going to go through all that over the left, but we want you to walk the right path because now this world is coming more chaotic than anything. And that's the thing, you know, we want to corral our kids and hug them all night so they don't leave, but they got to leave sometimes. But they need to be ready, spiritually ready to be out there in this world because it's crazy. Psalms 119, 133 says, Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Hallelujah. God has said, I'm going to order your steps. I'm going to keep your steps going. That's my promise. 
But you see right now, as I'm keeping you going down the right path, don't let that whatever, don't let Susie over the right pull you that way. Hey, Susie. Uh-uh. You see Billy on the left. Hey, Billy. We don't need that. Hallelujah. God said, I want you to go straight. Don't look over there because that over there is dangerous. Over there is much more dangerous than what you think it is over there on the right. I want you to look forward. I, want, I don't want you going around and then around and around in the circle and you're marching and you're taking your steps and you don't know where to go. And next thing you know, you're back where you were. I always wonder why they uh, made us march in the military. I mean, we marched everywhere. Left, right, left, right. We had cadence. Are you left? We had all that. But it was to get us somewhere. But it wasn't, it, wasn't get us, it wasn't to get us closer to God, but it was just to get us somewhere. But what I'm saying is, that's what we need to do. We need to be a cadence, left, right, left, right. We need to march straight to God. We need to take them steps, or we need to run and say, God, I'm here. I'm here. I'm going straight now. I don't want to go left. Hallelujah. I don't want to go right because over there is Susie, and she's going to get me. Over there, Billy's going to rack me up, and he want to marry me. I don't want that yet, Lord. I want you. Hallelujah. Brings me to my second point. Woo! I'm telling you, when you don't, you go, whew, God. This is Proverbs 24, 16. It says, for a righteous man falls seven times and he rise again. We all going to fall short of the glory of God, church. We know that. God knows that. This is why he came down on earth and walked this earth. He went it. I mean, I couldn't believe how many times, how many miles he walked, how long he walked. I would have been tired when he took two steps. Like, oh, God, I'm tired. You, you walking too much. In the heat. Come on now. Woo-wee. And, and I don't know how he did it, but he walked. But he said, but a just man, a righteous man fell seven times, but he got up. He said, you're going to fall. You're going to fall many times. But the problem is you need to get up. Keep getting up. You scrape up your knee, dust it out. You remember when you were a kid and you fell off your bike or something? You got a, you got a, 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 like, a like a knot on your knee or a scrape on your knee. And you go, mom, oh, my knee. And you cry to your mom. God said, get up off your feet, man. Come on now. Come on, rise up. Well, I understand you're going to fall. You're going to scrape your knee. You're going to hit your elbow. You're going to do all this stuff. But you got to get up. You can't stay down. You got to keep moving because I'm going to keep ordering your steps the way I want them to go, amen. And that brings me back to Adam and Eve, amen. It wasn't not planned for the fall of man. But the problem is we, we got to stop blaming Eve. It, 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 everybody knows who was in charge. It was Adam. The problem was Adam wasn't stepping fast enough. Hey, wait a minute, Eve, don't talk to him. He wasn't fast enough to get over there and tell her, uh-uh, leave that alone. But you know what he did? He's strolling in the garden, <laughs> no care in the world, and the serpent like, hey, Eve, did God really say that? What, 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 what? There go the right now. She's talking to the, she, well, 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 yeah, he did, but uh, they, Adam's fault. All Adam's fault because Adam needed to have been stepping more faster than when he was in, when he was walking around in that garden trying to be like there's no care in the world. He should have saved her from that serpent. You think about it. Where would we be if Eve wouldn't have never said anything to that serpent? We'd probably be living in the garden right now, eating on uh, what I would say grapes. In my, in my case, looking for a coconut. That's a long story on that one. That was a long story on the coconut. That's a, I'll talk about that one later after church. But that was the issue. But the problem is God punished everybody. God didn't leave no, no stone unturned. He, he went down the line. You know how they say a read? You read somebody, God read all three of them and cursed them all, amen. But you just can't stay down, Amen. Even when you fall and overcome these obstacles and these challenges in your life, by God's grace and strength, dust yourself off. Stay calm. Because I know when we were a kid, we, we, we were crying to mama. We were crying. We, we was always in a little cut, in a little scrape. You was crying to mama. 
Now, some of us tough. I ain't tough like that. I'm going to be honest. I was crying. Mom, I need. I ain't going to lie. I was a mama's boy. I admit that now. So the two separate paths, amen, in our life, we got the righteous, and the other one is wicked, the wicked path. Now, both of them are going to leave you in a direction where you shouldn't go. The, the question is tonight, which one are you, or which one are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the righteous path, or are you going to choose the wicked path? And the righteous path is about good morals, great character, respectable, you honest, you got good principles, you honorable. If you claim that path, that's the path that God wants you to go. Now, if you chose the other path, you know, there's going to be dist distractions, it's going to be tragedy, and it's going to be things that's going to cause hiccups in your life, cause a lot of issues. And then it's going to be much harder to overcome those adversities. Because now you got to turn back to God and look toward God. And God's going to look at you like, you didn't listen, did you? I told you to go where I wanted you to go. And what are we going to do? I know God. I'm sorry. Yeah, like Mr. Brown. I'm sorry. You can't do that. Huh? Hallelujah. But it's going to bring me to my, my final point tonight. Hallelujah. He holds out his hand. Now, when I was a kid, and there was this 12-foot pool, I barely knew how to swim. I know how to swim now to save my life. I can't save nobody else. You're on your own. I'm just being honest. But I jumped off in a 12-foot pool. And they, let me back it up. They had like a diving board. I was scared to jump off because I seen them how they, and all that stuff on the diving board. And I'm like, I might miss that diving board and hurt myself. So what I did, I ran and jumped in the 12-foot deep. As I'm going down, 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 and I'm looking up, like thinking to myself, why did I do that? And I'm like, but my, one of my cousins, that she, she knew how to swim, she grabbed my hand and pulled me up. And the reason why I said that story is, is she, I'm not saying she's God. But what I'm saying, when God said, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm holding my hand out. As you go down, I'm going to pull you out. If you're going through some things, I'm going to pull you out. If you feel that you can't handle stuff, I'm going to pull you out. Whatever it might be, God is going to pull us out of it. And that's what he's saying. I hold out my hand to pull you out. Matthew 14, 31 says, Immediately Jesus put out his hand and took hold of Peter. And he said to Peter, You should trust me more than you do. Why do you believe that I can't help you? Hallelujah. See what I'm saying? Look at Peter. Peter trying to walk on water. He's Jesus telling him to come. He's walking. He's walking. But then he heard the winds and he felt the wind blowing and the water shake. As he took his eyes off Jesus, what did he do? He sunk like a big fish. Jesus had to reach down and pull him out. Pull him out of that water, amen. That's how we are. When we take our eyes off what the path that Jesus wants to take us on, we go down. Things start happening in our life. Our finances are ruined now. Our marriage is destroyed because we took our eyes off Jesus. We didn't come, we didn't come to him like we should. We didn't come correct. We didn't come to him when we needed to come to him. We come to him when things are rough. We come to him when, when, when we feel that we need him now. God said, you need to come to me now. Don't wait until something happens. Amen. Don't take your eyes off me. As soon as you come, that's what I like about Jeremiah when he told Jeremiah, I knew you before you knew yourself in your mother's womb. And that's what God is saying. I know you, but what I want you to know is I'm here for you. I'm here to grab you. I'm here to comfort you. 
You just got to reach out. I'm here. You got to come unto me. Come unto me, he said, who's labor. God said, I'm always here. I'm always got your back. Not that person on the right. Not that person on the left. I'm always ahead. I'm right there waiting for you to come to me. Amen. I'm your goddess. Amen. Psalms 134.2 says, lift up your hands in sanctuary and bless the Lord. See, this is why we always got to raise our hand. Because we know God has got us right here in, his, in, his, in, his, in the midst. We know God is right here with us. Amen. This is why we always give him praise at night, at day, wherever you at, in your car, if you if you're in the shopping mall, you start speaking in tongues, give him praise. I know somebody that do that now. They give him praise. They don't care where they at. They're gonna give God praise. They're gonna say thank you, God. They're gonna start speaking in tongues and telling God we love you. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. God, you see, God, I was down and out, but you came through. Hallelujah. My last. This is my last uh, verse, amen, when it says, Your word is the lamp of my feet and the light to my path. Psalms 119, 105. The message ver uh, version says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God has already shown us the way. It's up to us now. It's up to us to just, Lord, I'm here. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm beaten. Grab my hand. Let me touch you. That's why I like the woman uh, you know, with, the, with the blood issue. All she had to do was touch the hem of his garment. And she knew where to find Jesus. With every head bow, eyes closed tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be afraid to call on his name, church. Don't be afraid to, be, to hold his hand. Always reach out. Don't go to the right path. Don't go to the left path. Go straight where God wants you to go. We all go through some things in life. We all going to fall short of the glory of God. But there's restoration. There's healing. There's salvation there. It's waiting for us. It's up to us to catch hold of that. It's up to us to make up our mind. It's up to us to get in our hearts, to make our hearts right. We got to do that. We need to hold out our hands for him. We need to cry out for God. You're struggling, going through hard times. Call out for him. Don't be afraid. I don't care where you at. In your home, like I said, in your car, on your job. There's times that we go through things on the job. Call out for him. His hands is there waiting for you to grab. Don't go through struggle in life not wondering where you're going to go next. What's your next step? What's your next destination? Rely on God. I'm going to get ready to open up this offer. Oh. Open up tonight, amen. And if this message touched you tonight and, 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 you, and you got a clear understanding now what God wants you at in your life, amen. And you're tired of the struggle of and you never received him as your Lord and Savior, tonight is a chance to receive him as your Lord and Savior so he can direct your path. If that's, that's you tonight, all you have to do is raise your hands. Hallelujah. Talk to the Christian. We always think everything is good on the outside. But we know that some in Christian's life, sometimes we are we're beat up, beat up through the week, beat up through the month, beat up through the year. Amen. Even though this is the new year, we're just getting beat up, and getting sick and tired and sick and tired. You don't know where to turn. You don't know where to go. You don't. You see obstacles in your path. 
But God has said, I'm trying to clear all that out for you. All you got to do is just reach out your hand and I'm here for you. If that's you tonight, Christian, you just raise your hands, amen. Don't be afraid, amen. As I get ready to open up this off, this open up the church, amen, this altar tonight. Don't be afraid to come down and kneel before God and, and ask God what direction you want me to go into in my life, amen. What path is I'm going to take? I want to take the right path. If you get ready to sing this song, be able to stand on your feet, stand on your feet. Help us sing this song. The altar is open. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Move. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord. Now he knows I 
my name. Hallelujah. He knows our thoughts right now, church. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 As we get ready to dis, uh, dismiss tonight, amen, keep Pastor and his family in prayer. Amen. I want to thank you. It's been a blessing to uh, stand before you right now and bring God's word to you. He knows our name, church. He knows our thought. He's our maker. He knows everything about us. He formed us. It's just up to us now to walk that right path that he wants us to walk into. Of course, there's going to be roadblocks on the right. Of course, there's going to be roadblocks on the left. But God wants us to go straight to him. Call on his name. Get on our knees and praise his name. Amen. With that said, as we get ready to dismiss, amen, we'll have Brother Slide to close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for this evening's service. Lord, we thank you, God, for this word, God, that our brothers preached to us this evening, God. Lord, we just pray, Lord God, this evening, God, as we take this message, Lord, and use it to direct our lives, Lord God, that we trust in you, God, every day and every second, Lord, every hour, Lord. We just pray, Lord God. God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord God, that you watch over us, Lord God, as we come back, Lord, Sunday morning and evening, Lord. Just pray that you keep us safe, Lord, as we go home tonight, God. Thank you for everything you're going to do, Lord, and continue doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.